Hello Commanders, how's it going? This is a life given in today's video. It's going to be slightly different. It's a video aimed at the pay to play players and how to improve your spend a bit more efficiently. So although the free to play players um, might not find this appealing, there might be certain bits you can take away to help you strategize in terms of opening and winning loot boxes. So let's just jump straight into it. Quick overview. So we're going to make your money go further. Um, don't chase meta, avoid info spending, and we're going to stay within budget. So that's basically what I'm going to cover today. So let's get straight in. A key topic of this video is basically about making your money go further. So the first thing is operation pass, the premium pass, special event coins and gold. This is what I'm going to focus on as this as these four points seem to be the key points when it comes to um, having a budget and get the most for, you, for your money. So let's look at the first thing is basically operation pass. So Pixonic are trying something different where there's now five operations, which, is, which are all quite tempting, but they are quite expensive, about $15 a pop. So obviously if you have deep pockets, you're most likely going to um, buy those passes. Um, but many players don't have a massive budget so the idea really is to basically just buy a pass that appeals to you. So for example, in the last pass, op pass Operation Pass E, there was a Typhon um, with the um, Stellar Wasps. And that pass was okay, it was $15. Um, and the reason why I went for it is because I wanted the Stellar Weapons. So I looked at Operation Pass A, B, C, D, E was the most appealing. So the point is basically go for an operation pass if you want to buy one that's most appealing to you there's no point getting something um for the sake of it. it's obviously wasting money but obviously if you've got deep pockets you know go ahead um the other bit of advice is basically don't commit to an operation pass until you've actually completed it so this is a mistake that i've made when i first started playing i used to when the operation pass came out I used to buy it straight away and in some cases, I was unable, unable to complete the operation. So although I spent $15, I didn't actually get any, I didn't get the maximum value for the operation. So the idea is to basically do not buy the operation pass, play the game as normal and the, you know, and complete as many of the operation tasks as possible. So some have 20, some have 40, some have 15. So the artist complete all of them. And then early when you completed it, by the operation pass however there is an exception um some people unfortunately can't complete the pass like when i first started playing i couldn't complete all the tasks in operation but um what i found was that um i got to a certain level in the operation where i thought okay it's worth my 15 dollars so for example i might have got 400 platinum a robot a skin or something like that so if you if you if you really think about the pros and cons of buying on, buying a half-baked operation um, that might help you decide whether you should buy it or not um, so that's the only exception where you would really buy an operation and you haven't completed it where you've completed certain levels so let's just say there's 20 and you've done 17 out of 20 and you might be happy with the number of prizes you get in the 17 tasks that you've completed so that's the only time I'd recommend buying an operation pass if you don't complete it. Secondly, we're going to talk about the VIP premium pass. Um, so this one, the main benefit of this really is getting that extra 50% silver and um, honor points and a few other bits. So the reason why I'd recommend that you get this is because when you play War Robots as a pay to play player, you might as well try to gain as, as much resource as possible. So the key two resources of the game are obviously silver because you need silver to upgrade your robots and you want honor points to complete the operation. So you get more honor points, which in turn means you get to complete the operation task faster. So in terms of, of, of buying operation or premium, I, I would buy the premium first and then go for, for an operation pass because at least that way, when you've got the premium, you're guaranteed to get an extra 50%, which in turn will guarantee you're able to complete an operation. Um, 
so there's two things about getting these on special offer. So at the moment, I think it's nine pound nine, nine pound ninety nine for ten days, or fourteen pound ninety nine for thirty days. That's the standard pricing. But they do come on offer occasionally. So at the moment, there's an offer for a thirty day pass for nine dollars ninety nine. So that's a really good deal. However, I've heard that there is a yearly pass, but it only comes out once a year. And from what I've read, it's between December and January. So toward the end of the year, that's when you'll get an offer to buy this, this VIP premium pass for $99. So, I mean, if you were to calculate the prices for individual passes, let's just say you got the offer for £9.99 for 30 days, and you got that offer every month, that'll cost you $120. Whereas if you buy the 99 yearly pass, it's obviously $99 and you're saving $20. Um, the catch with the $10 deal, so $10 for 30 days, it's not every month from what I've seen. It's I get it now and then. I mean, you might get it every month, but I, ha I haven't noticed it. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm basically buying the monthly pass, which is $9.99. And I'm going to wait toward the end of the year until I get that deal for the year pass. Um, so that's my second recommendation for getting VIP premium. The next tip, special event queens. So it's a bit controversial um, because the trouble with the special event chest is that they have the new stuff and people want the new stuff. So. The question is how can you make your money go further when it comes to a special event coin um so two things here is the chest strategy what i mean by that is pick a chest that you like the look of most so for example the gold the bronze silver and gold chest that you find in the game and you might find that the silver chest the middle one has a prize that you really want for example it might have a robot that you really want so i'd say I recommend you stick to that chest. Um, there's also a catch. Usually on the fourth opening, you will get a special prize. And by some chance, you might get the special prize in that chest. For example, in a chest, the like the 90th opening might be the brand new robot. So the new meta robot, which is guaranteed if you open it 90 times. But sometimes on the fourth opening, so from zero to four, you might get that special robot. Um, so focus on or focus on one rope. Focus on one chest. So either the lowest, the middle, or the highest, and try to go for the fourth opening. So you get. So you could possibly get that guaranteed prize. So that's my recommendation. Um, have you know, the last event went. And I really, I kind of forked out a lot of money on the keys. There's not that much money, but I spent a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I wanted the um, Megalodon Orokai. And uh, I think I spent maybe 30 or $40 on keys to get that. But then what I realized was that sometimes you do get the robots on offer, which might work out cheaper. So for example, let's just say you, sp you spend 50 or $60 on the special event coins just to get the one robot but five weeks or two months or three months however long it is you might see that robot on offer for twenty dollars so you could make some saving there by not actually um having this thing where, where you feel fomo feel of missing out and you want it you want it because it's the newest thing um you could save money if you don't give in to that the second most important thing is buying the event coins on special offer so when the event starts you get an offer for the coins which they say you get 50 percent or something like that compared to the full price um which is still quite expensive for example you you pay 50 dollars for four thousand keys um but if you wait a week a week or two that same crate will be even cheaper so the idea is to basically wait and hold out until you feel as though the offer for the coins is worth it so I've got done a little table here if you have a look. So you've probably seen the regular offer of 100 coins for $1.99. So at the time, it seems like a fairly good deal because it's very cheap. $1.99 is pretty cheap because you can only buy the keys and normally like, you know, 2,000, 1,000, 3,000, 4,000. That's quite expensive. 
so then when you see this one dollar ninety nine deal you think wow that's a you know i can afford i can afford that and then you fork out on it but from my calculation as you can see per a coin is probably the most expensive so at the bottom there in green i've highlighted this deal that came out in the in in, in the dsc boot camp special event that just went pixonic were offering 3600 keys for nine dollars 99 and that worked out to be the cheapest option for obtaining keys um for those chests so the thing is that they, these offers aren't going to be the same for the new events so i'd recommend that if you are a bit savvy with a spreadsheet is track the prices for a week or two and then you'll have a rough idea of what a good price is for the coin per coin and what a bad price is so as we can see here um obviously the one dollar 99 price isn't great it, it feels cheap because of the low price but in terms of price per coin it's the most expensive and then you see the 4800 keys for 50 dollars um which seems reasonable um and then you see 3600 key deal for 20 dollars which is even cheaper so if you track the prices for a week and figure out the price per a coin for each offer that you see per a week you then have some data to figure out okay when you when you see when you see another deal you can say okay um if i do the calculation that's a banging deal as in a good deal um and then you might find actually it's not a good deal the other thing to mention is that this price of ten dollars for fakes is 100 keys it only came out a couple of times so it definitely came out toward the end and the start and the middle so keep an eye out for that but it's not always guaranteed um so always sort of wait for the deals to come to you and as the event um ending comes close like the end date comes closer i noticed that they were offering pixonic were offering um better deals on the coins so if you can't if you can wait and not give in to fomo as in you know you play a game and you see this new brand new robot you think oh, i don't want that if you can hold out and not give in and then wait till the end of the event you'll probably be able to get better value for your money so um that's a that's a read really, i mean i i learned about this um after going on reddit and reading you know posts by people and watching videos so uh, it's, it's a really good tip the next tip is for gold um so the thing is i think most people know how valuable gold is it's sort of the second most valuable currency in the game second to platinum um a bit self-explanatory don't spend gold to speed up upgrades that's the worst thing you can do because you'd rather you're better off saving the gold for your pilots because it costs money to upgrade your pilot um skills and for example if you want to shift your um weapons or robots from mark one to mark two or mark three you need gold for that so save your gold don't spend it speeding up um upgrades the other thing is wait for gold to go on offer it's the exact same thing as the coins because you will see gold go on offer and what i've noticed is that if you don't buy gold for a lengthy period so maybe not three four weeks you'll get a crazy offer for 99 cents which will get you 500 or 750 gold and in some cases i hear people talking about buying you can get a thousand gold for 99 cents that's a really good deal um but, but most of the time you'll see deals for 2500 gold for five dollars um so most of this really is basically waiting for a deal and you you could do the same thing as a previous slide where you can figure out what like what's a good price for gold so if you do the calculation of per a gold coin what's what's a, you can track it and you can figure out okay um when you see this offer you do your calculation that's a really good deal for gold buy it but the idea is to keep within your budget next thing is um <laughs> avoid gambling so let's just let's and i'm not gonna say it's gambling because it is and it isn't but basically when you go for um the operations not operations when you go for special event chess um you're basically you're, you are gambling you know you, you you open a chest and you might get a prize one or three so the question is should you gamble or should you just wait for deals to come out for something that you want so for example in the special event 
box you might see a weapon or you might see a bot that you think okay um i really want that in sometimes it works out cheaper to wait two or three months until that weapon or bot is on offer say for example you spend 50 dollars buying event coins um to get a robot and then you finally get the robot um and some other stuff and then maybe two or three months down the line that same robot might be on a massive discount so you might get it for ten dollars so rather than spending that fifty dollars to get all those coins to open all those crates to get that robot you only spent ten dollars um to get it a lot cheaper but obviously i understand some people um are saying that when you spend the money for example fifty dollars on coins you are accumulating components and weapons so you do benefit from that but um you know, if you have like a very tight budget uh you could always wait for the offers for weapons and robots so chasing meta we've all done it i still do it it's a bad habit that you get caught in and it's very difficult to get out of because well, when you play games and you see other players with the new stuff you want that stuff as well it's human nature right you want the same thing so the main thing really is if you go on reddit is basically or if you go on the discord chat is like don't chase meta don't chase meta concentrate on what you have unless you really want something yes then go for it but don't chase it so chasing meta is a trap so what i mean by that is um it's a never-ending cycle so you get the latest robot you spend gold on the pilot you spend silver upgrading the robot and then you might even spend silver upgrading weapons for that robot and then a month later a new meta comes out and then you end up getting that meta and then you have to go through the same cycle again so you end up spending more time and money chasing metas so i'd recommend that um to avoid this trap is the test server so some people might not might not have access to this so it's available on android and ios um, users so the, the test server um, is basically a, you know it's uh, it's a separate download that you get from pixonic which lets you test out all the new robots and that kind of stuff um, the reason why i say it's your friend is because most of the time you can sort of test drive a robot or a weapon before you commit to it um, so for example if you see a new meta or you've heard about a new meta but it's not out yet and you're trying to figure out do i want that robot because you might see other youtubers showcase like manny or adrian um you know who will show you a video of this new robot and they're having fun with it but in reality fast forward two three months when it's released and you get the robot you might run actually i don't get a robot with this robot and then you spent all that money um buying that robot so the test server is great where you can basically test drive the new robots and old robots and figure out whether or not they're for you the other thing is um sometimes there's a special skirmish mode that pixonic do every now and then and they have different set of robots that you can also test so that's another way to test drive robots so i'd say definitely concentrate on um, jumping on the test server to test out the new robots and new weapons and i hope you figure out whether or not when the robot is released you want that robot so it also stops you from wasting money on coins or keys um so here's a typical budget strategy so a budget strategy is your wallet's friend um so basically you're avoiding going over budget um so at the end of the month you can't look at your bank statement and think oh my god i've spent like 50 dollars above my budget so have a budget and um you can split it up so what i've done here is let's just say you've got a 50 dollar budget um i'd recommend you say 15 dollars for your operation pass because you might want to unlock an operation that you like the look of definitely save the money for premium so i've put 15 dollars there for the premium and then the remainder 20 dollars on coins and keys um so as you can see at the bottom i've put an asterisk 15 dollars for gold so for example if the operation pass let's just say there's no operation or there's nothing in the operation that you want you can then put that budget toward buying gold because uh you know gold will help you upgrade your robots for example to mark mark to that kind of thing and um, even weapons um the other thing worth mentioning is that sometimes it might be useful not to go for operations not to go for premium or gold um 
if you're trying to chase all the new stuff. So in that case, you could basically spend 50, the whole $50 just buying event coins, which means that, you know, you're in some shape or form guaranteed to get the special robot and you might actually get a whole bunch of stuff. So for example, you spend $50 opening a special chest, not a special chest, a, yeah, a special event chest and you get all these components and you, get, you might get a weapon, you might get the new robot, you might get gold and that kind of thing. So all those resources will add up and might benefit you more. Um, yeah, so that was it guys, basically just going over some tips that will help you um, figure out where to spend your money, how to spend your money and how to stay within budget. Um, if you have any tips of, of your own, leave them in the comments and um, for other people to see. I'll leave a link in the description for a Reddit post where somebody asked a similar question um, which has some great advice in there which is basically what I've talked about today in today's video. But that was it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave, leave a like, thumbs up and subscribe. Okay, see ya. Bye.